Welcome to the desert. A hundred days ago, this was just an empty box, but it has transformed into a vibrant yet deadly ecosystem. There are heroes, monsters, even legends. There is life and death. Can this desert survive nature's wrath for the next 100 days? And can you survive my voice for the next few minutes? Or will it all fail? It all started with our first tiny resident, springtails. Smaller than a grain of sand, these shepherds of the soil eat mold and fungus. Without them, this empire would fall before it could rise. But they are not alone. Predatory mites have arrived, and springtail is on the menu. But there are worse things that lurk in the dark. This earwig is 25 times larger than a springtail. Our new friends must reproduce faster than they are devoured, if they are to survive. On day three, I added a wide variety of isopods. These adorable little janitors are devoted to keeping the soil pristine by eating all decay. They immediately sought shelter from the sun's brutal rays. Except this one who's just vibing. And this one just saw his ex-wife. These little trash turtles will have to set aside their cultural differences if they are to survive the monsters that are coming. Buffalo beetles, poop's worst enemy. That's right, they eat poop, dead bugs, and anything they can sink their greedy little mouths into. They reproduce rapidly and without a predator, they will take over this entire desert. A wise man would add only a few, so I put in a hundred. I'm probably going to regret this. I regret this. The buffalo beetles have taken over. They're on the walls, in the sand, and they've had babies. Just look at how fast they mercilessly devour this dead roach. Yeah, I'm thinking it's time for a predator. Hey look, it's my ex-girlfriend. This monster is the antlion. It digs beneath the sand to lay a deadly trap. Except this one is drunk. It eventually gets it right, and just in time, because here comes lunch. The beetle falls into the trap. The antlion throws sand to keep the beetle down. The antlion grabs the beetle and fills it with enzymes that will liquefy its insides. Even the babies aren't safe. It is hardly the time to be break dancing. On day 76, there was a graveyard. Their insides had been sucked out. As dangerous as the antlion is, the predators that will be here soon are far more deadly. With the buffalo beetle population under control, the desert had grown quiet. Too quiet. And then something happened that hasn't happened in a very long time. It rained. One strobe light seizure later and the rain ended. The storm provided the plants with much needed moisture to grow lush. But this also attracted something new. Crickets. I added 50 and they immediately began their invasion. Crickets will destroy vegetation and even eat young isopods. They are chaotic little monsters that could ruin this entire ecosystem. But yeah, you're right, 50 isn't enough. So I added 50 more. 
But I left the glass open, and they started hopping out, and all over the place, and... By day 97, the crickets covered the entire desert. I hadn't seen the isopods in days, and they've already killed two of the cacti. To deal with this, it's time to bring in our last predator, the apex himself. Wait, something's wrong. You don't belong here. This is not your desert. This is a whip scorpion named Bathsheba. She's breaking into the simulation with only one thing on her mind. A cricket smoothie. She grinds and liquefies her prey. That's fine. I didn't want to sleep tonight anyway. When she finished, she climbed and left. Probably back to outer space. But we still had a cricket problem. Survival was hanging in the balance. And that's when he finally arrived. Salem, the Aki Monitor. The apex of this desert. He sees his prey. When he confronted them, he was so overwhelmed by their sheer numbers, he did what any legend would do. He grabbed the closest weapon and charged. Then he remembered. He has teeth. Over the next few days, he feasted. Eliminating the crickets one by one. None were safe. Except this brilliant one, high atop the canopy of a tree. Surely he was out of reach from Salith? Or not. With Salith atop his throne and every cricket defeated, balance was restored. One last smug cricket. Salith hates smug crickets. But his belly was so full that he gave up. Until the crickets started being smug again all over the place. This time, Salith was determined. Okay, let's try this again. With Salith atop his throne and every cricket defeated, balance was restored. The cacti grew new life, the springtails populated the entire desert, and the isopods single-handedly ended racism, all colors side by side, in harmony. They even had tiny babies beneath the soil. There were hundreds to carry on for generations to come.